Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, stuck in miserable, tough quarantine days and months. Feels like it too. Hoping that it'll disappear, and hopefully we'll be able to live longer if we can, so we can fight this. I'm going to review the latest Disney and Pixar film, Onward which is about two elf brothers who are on a quest to find an artifact that will revive their deceased father in a suburban fantasy world. It stars Tom Holland from the Spider-Man films where he plays Peter Parker aka Spider-Man, Chris Pratt from the Jurassic World films along with the Gardens of the Galaxy films among other comedies and dramas and all the rest. <laughs> Julie Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld, best known for playing Elaine Bennis. She was in a TV series on HBO called Beep. And she's been in other stuff too, including the recent film Downfall. Octavia Spencer, she's been in several movies, no doubt. Great actress. Mar Rodriguez. Kyle Bornheimer, Lena Raitt, Ali Wong, Ray Griffin, Tracy Ullman, yes, comedian herself from the TV series The Tracy Ullman Show that aired on Fox during its early days, which inspired to have The Simpsons, which is the longest running series ever, but she also went on to do her own shows like Tracy Takes On for HBO and many others she's done. Wilmer Ballarama from the TV series That 70s Show where he played Fez and John Ratzenberger who played Cliff Clavin in Cheers but he's been best known for doing all these other Pixar films you know just playing different characters. It's written by Dan Scalin, Jason Healy and Keith Bunnin, and is directed by, once again, Dan Scalin. The movie began set in a mystical fantasy world that's being inhabited by creatures such as dragons, and you have wizards and warriors coming around as magic had became a common place for them, so they go around defeating them using all these powerful spells, swords and sorcery, and they also create many lands around. And they also became smart and intelligent so, over the past couple decades. Very difficult to master as it seems. But after technological advances over the decades, magic had soon become obsolete and was largely discarded. That's what sets directly into modern times in a city called New Mushroom Tun. Where we meet all these elves, including a young teenager named Ian Lightfoot, who's voiced by Tom Holland, who's actually lacking in self-confidence. He's very shy. He's trying to fit in with the group in high school, especially trying to get to know his friends and all, and hoping he'll do great. He's even trying to um, learn how to drive, trying to go into the freeway, but he had trouble trying to merge in with the traffic, so he just wasn't ready for it. Um, he's joined in with his older brother, Barley, who's voiced by Chris Pratt, who actually has a history by trying to um, find all these hidden gems around. Not only that, but he loves to play role-playing games, sort of like a Dungeons and Dragons, you know, type of game that he loves to do. So he's a total fanatic. I mean, he basically knows everything. Uh, we did learn that they did have a father, but he died very shortly before Ian was born, so he never had a chance to meet him. But Barley apparently did. So they live with their mom, Laurel, 
voiced by Julia Louis Dreyfus. Hard working mom, but she did what she could to help the boys out and everything and take good care of them. But she did have a new boyfriend who's a Satari police officer named Colt Bronco, who's voiced by Mel Rodriguez, who just comes around you know, whenever they get into a bit of trouble, mostly Barley. And I know at times um, Barley does tend to embarrass his brother, even though he loves him so much, you know, with his side here and there, even if they're not getting along very well, or, or they could. I mean, especially when Ian was just coming up with a list that he would come up to fulfill his dreams. I mean, he even wanted to invite his friends on his 16th birthday, but he embarrassed him just um, joining in with his uh, beloved band, Geneva, Geneva, which has a uh, a unicorn. Um, all it's all decorated with a unicorn that's painted in, and he actually has like a a radio and all this other stuff that he drives around. I mean, this was basically his cool band that he got. Okay. So, during his 16th birthday for Ian, Laurel had gave the brothers a gift from Wilden, which is a magical staff that contains a rare gem and has a letter describing a visitation spell that can resurrect their father for, for just one single day. So that way Ian will, might have a chance. And... Together, they'll be able to hang out with him. But then, suddenly, Ian had accidentally succeeded in casting the spell, but only had created the lower half of Wilden's body that's being reformed before the gem disintegrates. So then, so afterwards, the brothers embark on the quest to acquire another gem just to complete the spell by taking... Barley's band all the way through somewhere where I think the gem might be hidden. So now Laura had to find the boys only to realize that they were gone. Ian and Barley had visited the Manicor's tavern where they named from a monster who possesses a map to the gem, which the tavern is, of course. Indeed, a family restaurant managed by the Manicor. Corey, who's voiced by Octavia Spencer. They somehow argued with Anne over the map, and that's where she became completely nuts that she had to close the place down and created a disaster. Yeah, the entire restaurant was on fire. Because Corey realized how life was completely boring. Can't say I blame her. He drives the customers away in a particularly fit of rage. They closed down the place and, and now the cops came by with the ambulance and they and also the um, the fire station so they go around, you know, and washing all the fire away since they accidentally set the, the place on fire. Not to mention the map too, I mean the map was on fire as well. So the brothers only clue to the gem is by using a children's menu suggesting where Raven's Point is at that's going all the way through a nearby mountain. Laurel had later arrived at the scene somehow be friends with Corey as they agreed to help her try to find where the boys are going. Trying to warn that the Butter's Juni may awaken a curse that can only be defeated by her special sword. Which she and Laurel had stole from a local pawn shop. Of course, traveling around, um, they're being chased down by a couple of motorcycle gang of pixies. Yeah, just when they're about to go to a local gas station. You know, trying to get some gas to fill on their tank. But then accidentally, Barley had had told um, 
and to come up with a spell that can actually fill the tank, but then he accidentally uh, shrunk uh, Barley. Yeah, so it was pretty difficult. And just when they finally escaped from them, they somehow got pulled over you know, by a bunch of cops. So they had to disguise themselves as Colt Bronco. So in case, you know, nothing goes wrong. But even with a few mistakes that they had to make. Of course, they had to join in with their fodder. It was having trouble, you know, difficulty moving. I mean, they even had to disguise themselves, too, you know, trying to, like, put in a mask and, and a jacket, full body, so that way it'd be, like, so they don't get scared thinking that he's he doesn't have a body at all. <laughs> so when they finally uh, went there to Raven's Point, um, that's where it led to a trail of several uh, traps going around, you know, such as trying to walk through the bridge you know, through the cliffs, which that's how Anne had to use that spell that um, Barley had to inform him to. So that way the bridge can let uh, set up open and he could be able to drive in. Then he has to go all the way through all these other cliffs before these cops started chasing them around, including Colt Bronco, because they found out where they're at. And he had to send uh, his band. You know, crashed straight into um, a bunch of boulders to block their way. And once they finally went inside, yep, more traps, a lot of booby traps, hoping they'll finally be able to make it there in order to see where the gem is at. But then they realize that they were actually went back to where they started. Landed straight into New Mushroom Town. New Mushroom Tin. So now, knowing what was going to happen, they soon realized that yes, the gem was actually hidden somewhere in a statue, which all of a sudden had revived a dragon and was ready to attack him before um, Laurel, uh, Corey had came to the rescue to actually save them. Hoping what's going to happen next. I mean, if they'll be able to complete the spell. Yeah. So, um, for this latest Pixar film, um, well, it's not as good as all the other previous films that we got. I mean, it will never join in with, with the Toy Story films and A Bug's Life or even um, Monsters, Inc. for that matter. I still think it's a, a great film. I mean, it's very surprising. I mean, it's quite different from any other Pixar film we've seen. Um, but the cast was great. Uh, no doubt about it. It's, it's the story about two brothers, you know, trying to get along with each other, trying to figure out the spell. In fact, Barley's basically, you know, might as well just be the, the father figure. For, for him, seeing that he never had a fodder like he once had what he was going to have, but he just never had a chance. And I thought that really um, shows. I mean, Barley was actually uh, very nice to him, too. He really cares for his brother. I mean, even if he drives him nuts at times or, or embarrasses him right in front of everybody, he knows that he cares. But I know most people think that he's basically a screw-up. He really wasn't. But I guess that's understandable seeing that he's he's a guy who just cares more about his spells. And, well, trying to be as smart as he could. Instead of being dumb. <laughs> um, and Ian is, uh, you know, trying to fit in. You know, he's he's bit of an outcast, but he's doing what he can, you know, trying to learn everything from his brother, so he'll become, you know, very good at some of these spells that he was hoping he would do, even though he had trouble doing so, because he doesn't know how, I'm not so sure if he got it right or whatever he can, 
Um, their mom, you know, she's very caring. Does her best to take good care of them. She knows that she's there for them. You know, she's hard working at times. But it's great. Uh, Man of Core, which is uh, Corey, you know, I thought she was a great character too. Uh, she's very funny. And of course, Colt Bronco, who's always there, you know, whenever, you know, Barley has gone into bigger trouble and all, they just, well, <laughs> he knows that in, in case if something goes wrong, you know, taking Barley around and you know, protesting and all. <laughs> yeah. And hoping that, um, you know, Ian will be able to learn how to do everything his own way if he can. Yeah, but I think he needs to continue. I mean, go, going for his brother's advice if he can, or. But still, you no, know, I, I mean, it's. It has great animation. I mean, all done by Pixar, of course. And. Some funny scenes here and there. The story is very unique in this particular way. Yeah, it's about brothers. They care for each other. Even in tough times here and there. It has a bit of Zootopia in there. But quite different. So, in a way, I, I enjoyed it. Um, really did. Um, and has a nice soundtrack. Um, all of which were done by uh, Mikhail and Jeff Dana because they were the composers and they had Brandy Carlisle to um, come up with some songs such as Carry Me With You come to mind. So that's a good song. So, so that of course they just had to bark their journeys, you know, using all these spells. And this, you know, using all the magic that they could, and also try to defeat a dragon. <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately, um, the movie had one of the worst opening weekends um, during March, and if that wasn't it, so like all these movies, yep, they all got shut down because of the coronavirus epidemic, which I know that's been going on too. But they went straight to digital, so I had a chance to check it out, and wasn't disappointed at all. But it's very special. I, I give it a pass. So anyway, that's on word, and I give the movie four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.